We will look at uh, binding theory, the remaining aspects of it. What does binding theory mean in one sentence? A theory around interpretation of noun phrases. Interpretation in other words could mean a relationship between two of them. Are two noun phrases in a sentence dependent on one another for their references or interpretations? Are there relationships between two or not? If there is, what kind of relationship? If there is not, how independent are they? Is what we mean by uh, interpretations and this is what we formalize and this is what when gets formalized is called binding theory, which is an important component of the principles of principles and parameters approach of natural language. Okay? So, yesterday we looked at uh, reflexives and reciprocals which we called together anaphors and uh, pronouns and are ex expressions which mean referential expression in short. We, we saw the examples of these things and then we saw some examples where we find them dependent on one another and in some we saw they are not dependent on one another right so we 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 need to understand this in a in little bit more formal sense and then uh, then uh, we will look at it look, look at how to basically formalize uh, what aspects of its interpretation help us formalize these these things okay so let's see this is what we saw yesterday pronominal elements like himself herself itself are anaphors he she it they his her you yours these are pronominal elements and then uh, independent noun phrases np's like john the student the teacher these are uh, computers phones these are referential expressions which where we have seen that anaphors that is reflexives and reciprocals they have to depend on something else in the sentence for their interpretations our expressions do not have to depend on anything in the sentence for their interpretations and uh, pronouns have absolutely pronouns are a little bit uh, tricky where they are sometimes dependent on something else for interpretations and sometimes they are not. It has three parts, each part is called principle A, principle B and principle C. Principle A deals with anaphors, principle B deals with pronouns and principle C deals with R expressions. Principle A, the A in principle A has nothing to do with anaphor, it is just uh, in alphabetical order. No, not even in alphabetical order, it is in a particular order. Principle A for anaphors, principle B for pronouns, principle C for R expressions. Okay. We saw these examples where we know John is an R expression, himself is an is a reflexive, him is a pronoun. Okay. Uh, Looking at sentence number 2, we saw it is ambiguous and it is not good only in one interpretation, where, where him is dependent on John, then it is not, then it is not good. If him is not dependent on someone else, then it is okay. And, and likewise, we saw other examples. Then we, we stopped with this when we said there are prob the, the, the problem is that we see some specific configurations for 
spe specific configuration governing occurrence of these elements. It is not, it's not fair to simply say some couple of things about these things. It requires, it requires some serious attention. And then we see that uh, there the, the uh, configuration is different for different categories. Okay? And when we want to, and, and, and once we look at that these sentences, that is grammaticality or ungrammaticality of these sentences with respect to those configurations, then we see that the grammaticality or ungrammaticality of these sentences can be explained with, with binding theory. Okay? Uh, because such a su such a look at a, at the configurations of these sentences help us understand uh, help us understand not only not only the distribution of these these things these elements rather what underlyingly what are the things that underlyingly govern them and then we put them as what we call binding theory so let's let's look at some more issues related to this. Uh, anaphors and pronouns, let us first look at anaphors, that is reflexives, is called referentially dependent. Okay? Rather, we, we, we can also say they are co-referential. What do we mean by that? The way we it, it has something to do with the way we indicate them, okay? which is the two, two noun phrases have same index and, and the way we do it, uh, uh, we, we put same index for the two noun phrases uh, and then we say they are co-referential and co-indexed both, which is when we say John saw himself in the mirror himself and John have same index. Do you see that? With, we have, we, with the subscript I, we are putting, we are indicating co-referentiality. This is, this is all that we mean when we say co-indexed to describe co-referential, co-referentiality. Simple? We can say the same thing with words, that himself in this sentence refers to John. But to, to show that configurationally, we are putting indices on both, same indices on both of them. If we want to sh show that they are not co-indexed with one another, then we put two different indices at two different NPs. Uh, you, you can see that these are in this sentence, they are co-indexed with one another. Uh, well, these, these things are just not that important. Uh, you can you can just take a take a look at this and see what we what we mean by them. Now let's let's look at this, uh, and and this this is something which I have just talked to you. That is. The, the, there is another word that I want to introduce to you, which I think I referred yesterday, antecedent. When two NPs are co-indexed with one another, they, they carry same index. For a, for a ref, uh, reflexive pronoun, the antecedent is the NP that precedes it. Okay? Am I, am I right when I say antecedent means something that, that precedes it, right? Antecedents by definition cannot follow, right? So, and when we understand antecedent in that context of precedence and not following, we need to bring in the structure of this sentence in our mind too. 
that is the antecedent is always going to be higher in the structure than the reflexives. Okay. Can you give an example where a pronoun is co-indexed with the? I'm coming to that. Pronouns are co-indexed with one another. Yeah. 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 I'm coming to that. Coming to that. Uh, let let let's let me first let let me first introduce uh, referential ex, sorry uh, reflexives to you in little bit more details, and then I'm coming to principle D when we talk about pronouns. Do we, sorry? No, the same principles that we told both pronouns and reflexives can be co-indexed. Pron both can be co-indexed. So we gave an example of referential. Right. For reflexive. Right, right. So can you give an example? Yeah. Uh, uh, I, what you are saying is we, I, we didn't have examples in the same place. Uh, that, that's what I'm telling you. I'm, I'm coming to that. I, I don't have an example ready from the top of my mind, but I'm coming to, coming to that example in a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. So, do, do these things follow any constraint? Now, in, this, in the second sentence also, you see they are co-indexed, right? If, if, which is to say, we just cannot put one condition that they must be co-indexed. John and himself must be co-indexed does not guarantee grammaticality of the sentence. In sentence two, they are co-indexed, but the sentence is not grammatical. Right? Look at, uh, look at, we, even if we talk about precedence, right, is not giving us an answer. We can say antecedent must always precede is not giving us an answer because look at the third sentence, John's mother saw himself. Is that sentence good? No, it's j what is the, why is this sentence not good? It has an antecedent, they are co-indexed. What is wrong with that sentence? The antecedent appears to be John's mother, not John. That is the problem. In other words, even if the, the reflexive himself looks like it can have its antecedent only John because it is himself, it does not have access to that in a configurational sense. When you draw the structure of this sentence, then you will realize that it does not, it, it is, it does not fulfill certain aspects for being antecedent for this reflexive. What are those aspects that it does not fulfill? And how do we, how do we explain this thing? Look at this, these two structures and then you will be able to see why so, what is the difference between 1 and 2? Why is 1 good and 2 not good? That is, why is 1 grammatical and the 2 ungrammatical? The, see the difference between the two structures? John proceeds in both the cases. John is co-indexed in both the cases. The the argument is we need to say something else. In order to define the domain for reflexives and its antecedents to occur, we need to say something else. And that something else again, you, you, might, you might have guessed by now, is taking us to, okay, hold on. There is one more thing which I am, which I am presenting to you without saying it that we are talking about the sentence. So, we are saying they must be co-indexed, the antecedent must proceed and we are also saying that they must be within the same sentence. Still, we find some sort of ungrammaticality. Then, we need to talk about what is missing here is, is what we need to add to explain ungrammaticality of two and what we need to say is the antecedent, everything else that we have said is still true, but we need to add that the antecedent must see command the, the reflexive. 
the antecedent must see command the reflexive. Is antecedent John C commanding the reflexive into? Do, do we remember the definition of C command? Try. What is the, what's the definition of C command? What are the two, two requirements for C command? A C command B, if A does not dominate B. A does not dominate B and B does not dominate A. And first branch. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. One part. A does not dominate B and B does not dominate A. Does A dominate B into? A that is NP John does not dominate NP himself. They are co-indexed, right? They are, there is an antecedent and even if we look at C command, John does not dominate himself and himself does not dominate John. Clear? What is the second condition for C command? The first John should also dominate the This is where it does not, it, so the first branching node dominating A must also dominate B. That condition of C command is not being fulfilled here. In two, the first branching node dominating A is NP which is not dominating the, which is not dominating B. Therefore, John does not see command himself. Therefore, despite being within the same sentence, despite being co-indexed with one another and despite John being the antecedent of himself, the sentence is ungrammatical. Therefore, configurationally speaking, what, what becomes the most significant constraint on the presence that is occurrence of an NFR within the same domain is being in C commanding domain. That an NFR must be in the C commanding domain of its antecedent. A reflexive must be in the C commanding domain of its antecedent. Then the sentence is grammatical. Can I ask you a question at this, this point? When we have a, when we, when we have a sentence like, uh, okay, let, let me come back to that question little later. So we, this, this is what we talked. In one, the NP John C commands the NP himself, clear? Do you, do you agree that NP John C commanding NP himself? It's, it's a, A is, John is not dominating himself and himself is not, domi not dominating John. That, that was the reason why I wanted you to understand for the first time in the first place, the, the, the relationship called dominance and precedence. So NP John does not dominate NP himself and himself does not, definitely does not dominate NP John. That, that's quite obvious. Uh, however, the first branching node dominating NP, which is IP, also dominates himself. Therefore, they are in the C commanding domain. Okay? Therefore, it is good and you have seen why that is not grammatical. Okay? However, somebody answered this question. Somebody said that the antecedent looks like the entire NP in the spec position that is John's mother, right? If we are talking about the entire NP, then that NP C commands the, the, the reflexive, uh, the, the NP downstairs. But John's mother saw himself, if, if we say the whole NP is the antecedent for it, then what's what's the violation? The agree, not not the agreement. Indexes, indices is the problem. John's mother and himself two cannot carry the same index. The, as long as they are carrying the same index, then it's going to run into difficulty. Sir, what 
John's father saw himself, then the sentence will be grammatical. Then using the structure John, John doesn't see command. John's father, whole NPC commands that. That is to say, you see, here, here is what we are talking about. You are saying John's father saw himself. The sentence, is that, is that sentence right? First, John's father saw himself. What we are saying is, this NP, becomes the antecedent, right? And then they are co-indexed, this NPC commands this. If we allow this NP to C command this, him, this NP himself, then it is like number one, then there is no problem. The whole, no matter how big that NP is, John's father, it is definitely potentially big as you can see. If we allow it to be the antecedent of this, then there is no problem that NP is in the C commanding relationship with the reflexive. Therefore, that is that sentence is allowed. Okay? Uh, what the reason why you are you are saying why why have we put it under shade? Oh okay how the branching has worked. Okay. See I have tried to simplify it. Okay. Uh, the uh, I, I know, I understand your objection that how is that an NP. First, I just wanted to keep the whole thing as an NP, but then I won't be able to get the, then I won't be able to separate John from John's mother. So, it is like a genitive phrase and since I have not talked about genitive case and genitive phrase, I did not want to get into that and then make my point, right. So, what, what I have done is, this is a complex NP, this is a big NP, where uh, I, I see your main objection is, in the head position of that NP, why is not an NP and why is something else, right? So, but, but uh, uh, take, take it as an NP, as a, as a big NP, where one NP is in the spec position of the whole phrase. Okay, that is John. This is the that's that's the main point I'm I'm trying to show that be because the NP John is in non C commanding domain with the reflexive the sentence is ungrammatical. However, I agree with you that I'm not answering the complexity of this NP in in details right now because it's it's definitely not it it's called uh, you see uh, uh, there is another term which is called DP. DP and it is called determiner phrase, right. And in that determiner phrase, in the spec position an NP is allowed, okay. And the in the head position a case marker like off or apostrophe will be allowed. But I did not want to use the term DP either. Therefore, I changed the term DP to NP just to make my point, all right, okay. And then you have you, you know that when NPC commands the anapher and it is co-indexed with it and the NP first is said. So, so this is the configuration in which we say, now we can, I, I want to introduce one more term to you. We can say the antecedent John in, in one, that, that is Peter here, binds the anapher, okay. NP if it is in, if, if, an, if the antecedent and the anapher that is reflexive are in C commanding domain, then we can say NP, antecedent NP binds the anapher. And with that, we can say, th this is what, this is what, where the term binding comes from. That if we, if I want to say antecedent binds reflexives, what do I mean? The, 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 the word binding should itself be not difficult thing for you. But when we say binding in a technical sense, we say they must be under, under C commanding domain. Then the antecedent binds the NP with the two condition where the antecedent must C command and antecedent must be co-indexed with the NFR. That is the condition of condition called binding. 
Chance mother saw herself. Mm-hmm. Is the sentence grammatical? Chance mother saw herself. That looks grammatical to me. So then, but there is no concept of binding in the sentence because no, there mother is does not, doesn't see command. Mother doesn't see command. John's yeah. But John's, John's mother, the entire NPC commands. So there we consider John's mother as one NPC. Uh, uh, definitely, that's an NPC. Look at the look at look at this. This note. The so all I need to do is to just put whole thing together. What we are saying, the the problem is, when this NP is co-indexed, or this NP is co-indexed, then there is a problem of of C command D. But if this NP is co-indexed, then there is no problem of C command D. I, I, I think it is not, should not be complicated for you, right? Then there is no problem. And definitely that is the reason why John's mother saw herself is, a, is, is okay. Because he, in that case, we are neither talking about John nor talking about mother. Of course, mother is John's mother. But we, when, he, when we say we are not talking about mother, we are talking about just the NP mother. Is not not in our case. And and the reason why it it became a question for you is because you are looking at probably just mother, right? And John's mother is mother, so this NP mother is not in the C commanding relationship with the with the NFR. So how how does that configuration work? Probably that is that is your question. But that's not the case. The NP ma- whole thing, John's NP or Peter's NP, the NP in the spec position of the IP is in C commanding domain, is C commanding the NFR, then, it, then there is absolutely no problem, okay, all right. So this is what the principle A says. I, I, I could have just said this thing first and then gone into the details of that. I have shown you everything and then I am saying stating the principle. An NFR must be bound. In other words, reflexives and an antecedent binds an NFR. An NFR must be bound. Right? So if you see an NFR in a if a, if a sentence with an NFR is ungrammatical high probability is the probably the NFR is not bound and that is the case in number 2 that the NFR is not bound with the right antecedent. That is the antecedent that could pass probably bind NFR is not in the C commanding domain and we know that there are two conditions that an antecedent must fulfill before it can bind the NFR. And those two conditions are coin, same, having same indes, indexes, indices and then being in the C command domain, all right. There is one more condition on that uh, which I was, I was thinking I will tell you and I, I should tell you at this time. We have a sentence like Peter knows that himself saw John. Can you write this sentence? Peter knows that himself saw John. Peter knows that himself saw John. In this sentence, if you draw the structure of this sentence, Peter and himself are co-indexed, right? Peter and John are co- I, I do not have that on the screen, so I can, I can draw that for you as well. So let us look at this. We have an IP and uh, the problem in that IP is, I am sorry. Here is our NP Peter and then we have I and VP, here is our 
let us let us do it properly no and here is our cp right and then where is the where is the enough for himself here am i right here is the enough for. and then it has further things peter knows that that himself saw John, right? He, hereafter, it's, it should be simple for you. Now, look at this. If this is co-indexed, could be co-indexed with this, right? This is co-indexed and is this NPC commanding? P, C commanding himself? C commanding himself. So, they are co-indexed and they are, they are under the C commanding domain also. Why is the sentence ungrammatical then? Th that is because, you are right, right beginning from here, it is in a different domain, right? So, the, the, the two conditions that we are talking about for binding is, is okay is good, but we need to say one more thing that is the binding domain. These are the two conditions for binding, but the binding domain is within the, within the IP. So, co being co-indexed, being in the C commanding domain in the same IP is the actual condition for anaphors to occur being here in the spec position of another IP, even though it is co-indexed in the C commanding domain of its antecedent, the problem is, actually, actually it is not in, co, not in C commanding domain. You have seen C command and you have, if you remember, the constraint on C command was, what was the constraint on that kind of C command? There was, a, there was one more cons, one, one constraint on the C command. The constraint was a finite IP. We, we, have, we talked about this constraint when we were talking about assignment of cases. A finite IP becomes the barrier for a finite IP. This IP is finite IP because we are saying knows that himself saw John. Okay, that is a tensed IP, finite IP. So, this finite IP becomes a barrier for C command. Therefore, anything be from outside this domain, this from outside this IP, intervening to C command another element is not going to be possible. So, actually we are saying Actually, when I said this C commands himself is, is not completely right. If we ignore this constraint, then it appears to be C commanding. But there is a, there is a constraint that it will not be C commanding. So, one, one can defend it on the basis of C command also. But please know that the binding domain for NFR is the same IP, within the IP. And I, I think I have something here to say, to say an enougher must be bound. Yeah, uh, so, so the, the, these are just sentences. You can take a look at it and then meditate and think about this. Himself saw John in the mirror. The, the three sentences that we had just seen before is ungrammatical because of co-indexism co and, uh, and uh, um, an antecedent and uh, reflexive issues and, in, and the issue of C command, all of that will be able to explain it. Here is the sentence what you were talking about, Mary's father likes himself, something like that in, in third. Mary's father likes himself will be fine, but himself likes Mary's father is, is, is not good because 
of the obvious regions that I have just explained to you. So the, and, and this is the point that I raised, that John said that himself likes pizza is not good because it is not in the C commanding domain. John said that Mary called himself is not good again because the reflexive and the antecedent, antecedent does not C command the reflexive, they are not in the same domain. Uh, I wrote this thing, I, I, I hope you understand what it means that this, uh, the NP Johns appears to be C commanding the reflexive himself if we do not look at this constraint. But since we know about that constraint, it is not possible for us to ignore. So in order to dismiss this, we do not have to touch the nose through a different route. We can directly say that it does not appear to be C commanding because the second IP is a finite IP. Uh, so what is the difference between 1 and 2 on one side and 3 and 4 on the other? John saw himself in the mirror, John gave a book to himself, C commanding, co-indexes and everything is fine. John said that himself is genius, is out. You remember the sentence from yesterday? John said that himself is a genius. John said that Mary dislikes himself are out for C commanding reasons and not being in the same domain. So that, that's ex, that explains. More precise, so this is, this is how we can put the constraints in a precise way that it's, it's, the constraint is put in terms of locality which is the same IP. With, with locality the all we mean is the same IP and NFR must be bound in its binding domain and the binding domain is the IP. The smallest clause containing it, that is both NFR and ref, that is both antecedent and reflexive must be within the same uh, smallest clause that is the same IP. Look at this pronouns. Now I am coming to probably what you were looking for. John saw him in the mirror is not good, right? John saw him in the mirror is not good as, as, as it is marked here in this sentence. Because if we try to put same index for both, then it is not right. But with the same index, the second sentence is all right. You see that? John said that he is a genius. It is all right. John said that Mary dislikes him. That is also all right. They are co so co index, being co indexed is not just a problem for, uh, for the pronoun. Uh, please, please raise your hands if you see that, your, that that question is still not answered. John saw him in the mirror is okay if the, in, if the indices are not the same. So what is going on here in these four sentences? If I, if I just give you these four sentences and ask you to tell something about pronouns, what can you say? Particularly knowing that now, knowing the fact that you know the backgrounds of domains, IP, structure, C command. What can you say about these four sentences? Trust me, I do not have, do not have enough time, I did not have enough time for quizzes, otherwise these are the questions for quizzes. Asking you to provide generalizations and giving you a few sentences, that is the kind of problem one would want to struggle, struggle with. These are not the actual problem to make you struggle, once you, once you figure one, one thing, you can write the answer in 5 minutes. But these are the problems to think about. So what can we say about pronouns? They cannot be co-indexed within the same domain. If they are in the C commanding configuration, in the same IP, they cannot be co-indexed. If they, and they are allowed to be co-indexed, if they are in the different different IPs. So, but earlier you said pronouns and reflexes can be co-indexed. But at that time I did not talk about the same domain. The, and this is the fishy thing about pronouns, that pron, pronouns can be, 
we, we cannot say pronouns must be free like our expressions. We can only say pronouns must be free within the same domain. That is principle B. And the principle, I am coming to that right after this slide. An NFR must be bound in its binding domain. And NF, a pronoun must be free. That is principle B. Okay? So, they can be co-indexed, definitely. They can be co-indexed outside the domain. Within the same domain, if you try to co-index them, the sentence results in ungrammaticality. John's mother saw him. John and him are in the same domain. John, that is, so, then the John is not, so, so it is not true, but then it is not in the C commanding configuration. As long as it is not in C commanding configuration, that is fine. No, John's mother see command, John's mother saw him, try to write that and see the, see the structure. We, we, just, we have just seen the structure, John will be under the, the I, NP which is in the spec position. So, it's IP of the, the I, sorry, specifier of the IP has an NP. And within that NP again, if we bifurcate, then we get the John. So, the first branching node for John is going to be NP, not the IP. Therefore, it will not be able to say command him. Then there is no problem. We have said that is not even a problem for NFRs. John's mother saw himself, sorry, John's mother saw herself is not a problem. And when we say John's mother saw him is not a problem because they are not co-indexed. They are co-indexed, but not in the same domain. No, 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 they are in the same. Think about it slow. John's mother saw him. Okay? In this case, John's mother as an NP and him as an another NP, they are in the same domain, but they are not co-indexed. John's mother, if John's mother is I, him is J. Okay? Then that is, there is no problem. Therefore, the, we, we, we say that the distribution of pronoun, in the distribution of pronouns, pronouns and anapher appear different. And this is the difference which, which, which says, which leads us to principle B, which says a pronoun must be free in the binding domain. Okay? Free means not bound. That is, the conditions that apply for binding C command and co-indexation must not work for them is the meaning of being free. So, the moment you say John saw him and try to put the co-indexation, if, if the indices are not the same, then the sentence is alright and there, that is what explains ambiguity. If we say it has two meanings A and B with different index, index indices, Principle B explains both of them, right? John's mother, uh, here, here is the sentence that you were talking about. John's mother saw him is fine. I am sorry, the index is wrong. Index is wrongly given. I should have put John's mother in a square bracket and then given it the index and then the sentence will be okay. Okay? Understand the difference between principle A and principle B? Sorry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. De definitely. You are talking about sentence number 2, right? No, no, no. The, the problem is sentence number 2 is, here. this is how it should have been done. John's mother saw him. What, what I have done is I have put it here. Okay? This is wrong. What I should have done is I should have put it here. Oh, oh right, right, right. I am sorry, 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 sorry. That, that is also correct because the these two do not have same indices. If this is I, then this will be J. I am sorry, I am sorry. You are right. That will be J. Yes. 
and right now it is right now it is correct oh i'm sorry right now it is correct because they are not in the they can be co-indexed as long as they are not in the c commanding domain they can be co-indexed and then there is no problem you are right well we understand principle a principle b the differences between the two meaning of binding meaning of not being bound and then bringing in c command and the structural configuration to explain interpretations of noun phrases we understand this Can a pronoun and co NFR be co-indexed with one another? Something like, he saw himself. Yes. True. It, it, this, this can be done uh, as long as they are still following the same, uh, same constraints. They are in the same binding domain. They are co-indexed. They are uh, C commanding one another and within the same IP. Absolutely no problem. Okay? Absolutely no problem. So, uh, that's, that's principle B and then finally, principle C to in, in short, give me another two minutes, says our expression need to be free everywhere. That is for its reference and interpretation, it does not depend on anything within the sentence. When we say must be free everywhere, we mean within the sentence must be free. It, when it is not free in the world, in, in the world that is in the larger context, it depends on something for interpretation, but in the sentence it is free. Let, when we look at the sentences, the, the he likes John, if we try to put the index together, then the sentence is wrong. Why? Because we are trying to get the reference for our expression John from he, where it is violating principle C. The John cannot take, an, take reference from anything within the sentence. He saw John, he likes John, it is a perfectly alright sentence by itself. As long as he is I and John is J, perfectly fine. She, she said that Mary fears clowns. Sentence could be good as long as she and Mary have different indices. His mother likes John, same problem. No, 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 hold on, hold on. What is going on? There is a problem here, right? Yeah, just, just forget that sentence. The, I am done with my point with the first two sentences. So, our expressions must be free everywhere, anapher must be bound and pronouns must be free in the binding domain. Okay? Could be bound, that is could be co-indexed with something outside the bound, binding domain, but within the binding domain it must be free. These are the three principles of binding theory in which we need to understand binding domain and what we mean by being bound with the notion of IP, X bar and C command, that is all. Okay?